Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. I'm Lauren Cohen, host of Investing Across Borders, where we teach you how to invest, live, work, and play across borders. And I'm here today with my fellow Canadian guest, who has also made her way to the US, actually on the west coast of the country, in Los Angeles, in the Los Angeles area, Nadine Lajoie. I bet that not a lot of Americans say your name correctly, correct, Nadine? Yes, exactly. They kind of mess it up, but it means the joy, so that's not a problem. Exactly. <laughs> You're always joyful. It doesn't matter if they say your name wrong or not. Yes. So as you can see from Nadine's background, she is a tax expert, and she helps you to save money on taxes, which is awesome. And I met Nadine, I don't even know how we met, to be honest with you. Do you remember how we met? It's probably CEO space, I would say oh, seven space. years That's ago, it. seven or eight years ago, something like that. No, it wasn't so long ago that we met. We met only about six or eight months ago. Um, and I remember I was posting about something and you responded and I said, oh my goodness, a fellow Canadian in CEO space. And I got all excited. So um, Nadine and I became, of course, fast friends as I do with most of my Canadian uh, partners, especially the lovely women. And Nadine, tell us a little bit about you, your background, and what brought you to this amazingly interesting country that we both live in. Hey, thank you so much, first of all, uh, Lauren, to reconnect with me on Facebook and uh, inviting me on your podcast. And My pleasure. I'm really happy today to, to share different tax strategy with your people. Uh, I have a bachelor in actuarial science, so I wanted to become an actuary. I studied uh, in, in 1989 to 1992, but because of the recession, 1991, I never got a job. I got um, offers to get to work in actuary in 1998, six years later. It was too late. I was already a financial planner having a financial business in Canada. I was just going to say you were still in Canada then. Okay. Oh yeah, I was still in Canada. And uh, after three years and a half in the business, I was able to build a $10 million tax shelter for a million dollar client and being able to give him 39% more money at retirement. So that was wow. a win-win-win situation. And after that, I present that concept and that program to his attorney and his CPA. And they said, hey, we have other clients for you. So at 36 years old, I was blessed to be able to semi-retire from that business because I was dealing only with multi-millionaires with their CPA and their attorney. So I came here in the U.S. That was my goal. I traveled 21 states, uh, 10,000 miles with my RV. I was a motorcycle racer i became a champion motorcycle racer and when i arrived in california it was my dream for all my life i said okay i really need to find a way to stay in the u.s and right. I, of course for about a year I, I went back to canada the first year and i studied all kind of businesses in canada in, uh, in the u.s franchise uh, all kind of things and real estate kind of pop up and as it does uh, 90% of my clients, thank goodness. Yes. And, and the, there is two major reasons. It's because my clients, my rich client in Canada, I was always asking questions. Hey, how did you become so rich? Or how do you keep your taxes low? And they said, real estate is either they made their money in real estate or they save taxes with real estate. I'm like, oh, I'm loving it. So I started a class with Nouveau Riche uh, University at that time. That was a 120 hour class over two years, 10 different weeks. So I studied probably 500, 600 hours on how to invest in real estate, which is applicable in the US and in Canada. So from there, I started my real estate uh, investment in the US in my immigration process. I so hope that I would have uh, know you at that time. You're not the only one that says that. Oh my God. <laughs> I went the rough route. Trust yeah. me. They kind of refused my immigration the first three times. Actually, I got accepted the, the third time because I was working on the wholesaling <laughs> deals. We were buying 54 houses at $6,000 each and flipping them at 8,000. So that's how bad the market was. The market was already down like 35%. And 
And I was trying to convince my friend in Canada to invest with me because I saw the opportunity. I'm in finance. I, I, I was an actuary. So of course, economy, uh, stock market, mutual funds, everything is cyclical. And I, I knew like in 2008, when I came here in the US for uh, part-time in 2010 full-time, I knew it was the right time to invest in real estate. So and with that immigration- a Wrong time to invest in real estate, but knowing the right time is certainly ideal to paving your path to success. Yes, and, and you bring a good point because most people like me at the beginning, I knew two strategies, right? Buy an old, and fix and flip, right? We, we think that is, that is only that. But once I, do, I did my classes and I discovered there was probably 15 or 20 different real estate strategies, I'm like, oh, it's awesome. What's but your when favorite I came, one, Nadine? My favorite one, the one that I would like to do is multiplex. But here in California, my, my goal was to come here and find a triplex with a basement like we have in Canada and leave in the basement and rent the other three. But no, that doesn't exist. And I thought also that I can put 10% or 20% down and I would be good to go. But because I was Canadian, it took me, uh, with my visa, it took me three years to get my uh, social security number. What visa was it that you were denied the first two times? Uh, I got my uh, E2 visa, the investor visa. So why the did they deny two... you? Okay, the first time they said that I didn't have enough money invested at risk in the U.S. So this but comes I had... back to, and I'm sorry, I'm going to have to play lawyer here. Yeah. That's yeah. the substantial investment component that we talk about. Is it a substantial investment? And so the second time was... The second time, the, I had five houses at that time, probably over $250,000. So we were sure we would get it. The first time I had maybe two, three houses at 100 or 120, something like that. But the second time, they said I didn't have proof that I had money invested in the US. I had my property taxes, my uh, company already started, my utility bills, my deed of the house, but you know, those packages are so big. So the third time they just resend that little tiny package about the property bills and the deeds of my property. So final, and I had that 54 deals that we were working on. I got a bunch of emails and I put that and the lady said, oh, you again. I said, yeah, that's me again. It was the same woman? The same woman three oh, times. Oh my God. Row. I couldn't believe it. And in that process, it took me three years and a half and three times the same woman. She said, okay, I'll give it to you for three years. But finally, she gave it to me for five years. She was like, I just don't want to see you anymore. Just leave yeah. me alone. Right? Yeah, that was, that was awful. So from there on the real estate, and then and, and I, I really want to do a disclaimer. I'm not a tax. I'm not a CPA myself. I'm a tax consultant. I work with different CPAs, annual agents and all that and attorneys. And, but what I'm sharing with you today is a lot about my experience and all the hoops that I went. So like that your client can also kind of go through the hoop way easier because now they know you. <laughs> So that is very true. And I'm, I know you watched my webinar the other day and you were, that's probably, you were like, oh, where was she? Yeah. I've done this three times. Yeah. Right. And now I'm working with, like you with international clients and I help them also on international fighting requirements that I want to share a little bit later. But now I have more people in Canada who wants to come here in the U.S. They know that the real estate market is about to crash. So I'm trying to prepare a lot of clients to know their number and know their ROI and how real estate works and all those strategies. So when the market really crash in six months or in two years, we are all ready to move forward. And I'll be able probably to refer you some clients too. So the key is, you just mentioned strategy and be ready to move forward. And a lot of 
prospective clients or people that are interested in making the move are like, well, the borders are closed and is now the right time to invest and isn't the market going to crash? Look, the truth is that for every single investor and every single client, the story is a little bit different and a little bit unique. But the key is that if you have the right professional team, you're never going to go wrong. And you have to figure out your short-term goals and your long-term goals, and then create a strategy so that you can get there step-by-step. Step. Because not every real estate investment or real estate investor is going to qualify for an, an immigration visa. It's all about the structure, proving that you have the substantial investment in a non-marginal business. How does that look? What does that look like? You don't want to go back there three times. How did what, In between those three times of going back, what happened? Like, what were you doing? And what, were you still in the U.S.? Um, how long ago was this? I was uh, traveling uh, under that 181 or 182 days going back and forth. I was still racing motorcycle at that time. So I was kind of uh, traveling to be sure that I was here with my motorcycle, my RV and doing races. I'm a champion motorcycle racer, finished third at Daytona against 75 guys and so because wow, of my that's quite amazing show. i mean i've been on a motorcycle like three times in my life my mouth still hurts because of the wind hitting it that was years and years ago and, yeah and i mean you you must have been like completely i mean i know there's a lot of women that race motorcycles but you, if you were a champion you were like completely a unique like a trailblazer truly Yes, actually, we were like uh, when we started in Canada, we started a woman's class. And a few years later, they started also in the U.S. And of course, I was kind of a big promoter of that because I was semi-retired from my financial business. I was dealing only with big clients who got me like my one, my, one of my big clients got me like one hundred twenty five thousand dollar commission. Why? Because I was able to save him ten million dollars in taxes. So it's all about the value you provide. And at, at that point, I'm like, okay, I'm semi-retired. I'm just having fun. And in the meantime, because I was traveling for my, for my uh, motorcycle, of course, I was visiting houses, neighborhood to be able to deduct my trip too, because real estate is one of the best tax, uh, um, not uh, uh, tax reduction strategies. Yes. And okay, the business expenses, the real estate expenses, repairs and all that, it's one aspect. But you know, there is four different aspects in real estate, right? Tell us. There is amortization, uh, deduction, cash flow, and appreciation. Mm -hmm. Okay, with those four, most people, they just know the cash flow. But one, once you add everything together, in real estate, that's one of my class that I took as a real estate investor. When I saw that slide that you can make 45% ROI, return on investment with a $0 cash flow, like all the lights started to bubble in my head. I'm like, I'm loving that thing. So I studied and studied and you were asking about the strategies and also to relate to the visa. My favorite strategy was to buy multiplex. I first, I didn't have enough money. I was not able to get lenders mm -hmm. and it's passive income, which doesn't qualify. No, no, the, no. We talk about that in the webinar. Passive yeah. income won't work. You have to be actively involved in running a business, not a hobby, not the traditional real estate investing. Let's create passive streams of income. That's okay, but it's not going to help you get the visa. Yeah, so that's why one of my friends, a uh, fellow Ontarian uh, lady, she went through the process maybe a year before me. So she showed me her business plan. Oh. She helped me out. And we prepare a business plan a little bit more solid than hers. And we still got denied twice. So the that's rules are always changing. Because I didn't write the business changing. plan, you know. Pardon? If you known me, your business plan would have been stellar. And it would have, anyway, it doesn't matter. You didn't, yeah. but now but you do. At the same time, that was in 2008, uh -huh. right? 2008 to 2010, that's where there is a lot of kind of uh, rules or Changing. things that change. And I think like in 2012, that kind of more stabilized a little bit. So there were kind of a two, four year period that 
even all the attorneys that I talked to, they said we we got denied and we don't know why and all that. But again, if I would have known you, that would have been probably a way way more well, easier. Listen, we're in a state of flux right now. And, you know, the new administration always brings about change. And the last administration, I don't think very many immigration lawyers or immigrants were very in favor of, but um, hopefully we have a new path to success. Nadine, I want you to talk briefly because we, we only have about 10 minutes left about exactly, you mentioned the four streams of income in, within real estate. So let's say there's, there's two questions I want to ask. One, Let's say I bring you a client who wants to find strategies to save money on taxes. Do you go backward and potentially refile as well as current taxes? That's question one. And question two is, and this is for my listeners because I have a lot of joint venture partners that listen to my podcast. Do you offer a referral program since you're not acting as a CPA, but as a tax consultant? And how does that look? So if you could answer those two questions, that would be awesome. Okay, awesome. Yes, uh, the, the answer is yes, we can give a referral in, in a sense that I'm a, I'm a business consultant first, right? But because we have 45 different tax strategies, 45 different experts all around the country, Canada, Europe, and now we start to get people also in Australia. So we can really help people in the business side of it, the real estate kind of to know their number, we, uh, I have a software that I built. It can build like a eight different deals in two minutes. You can analyze wow. your ROI, your LTV, your cap rate, and everything With all the real estate opportunities. in two minutes. That's wonderful. I mean, we have a lot of clients that need that. That's wonderful. So eight in two minutes. Uh, the, um, the other thing is uh, the strategies. Sometimes we have to go back. Not every time. Okay, we have a free questionnaire actually on my website, yeah. nadinelajoie.com. So that questionnaire takes about five, six minutes, but that will help people to discover how many of those 45 strategies can apply to you. Mm -hmm. And usually it takes two, three days to get the specialist. We kind of have a back office. They kind of look at it. They talk to me a little bit and or they send me an email. Hey, I think this strategy, you can add that up. So that's really well done. And sometimes when we go back two or three years, it's because we are able to save even right. more taxes. Of course, why not? If you can get the yeah. money, get us money for past taxes that were filed without taking advantage of all of the deductions and the savings and the opportunities, then why wouldn't we? And I think yeah. that's, that's a great value that you bring. And one of the strategy, we can go back six months between tax taxes. So let's say somebody sold a real estate, a business uh, in November, they had a huge capital gain. Now, because we are still in that six month period, they, we can still go back and save those taxes. That's mm -hmm. what we call a QOZ or a QOF strategy. So we can go back six months. There is another strategy that's called the MIS and it replaced the 1031 exchange. Ah, tell me about now, that. Because the, the, the 1031, because the market is so high, a lot of people, they cannot exert that 1031 exchange, which is a really amazing strategy. It's amazing. But because they cannot exert that, they didn't find a deal within the first uh, 45 days 45 or the days, 180 yeah. days. Right. So that strategy, the MIS, give people 93.5% of their money. So the strategy costs 6.5% but you are saving your 20, 25, 30, 40 percent in capital, capital gains. gains. Awesome. And you can reinvest in anything. If mm -hmm. you want to go from a business to re retired or from a house to a business, so there is no like to like investment. So for wow. a lot of People who are on um, EB5, right? They invest millions and millions of dollars in the US. But once you, you start to turn over and do other strategies, maybe they can come in here with real estate and eventually invest in a landromat, right? Sure. If you have a multiplex, you cannot invest in a landromat with the 1031. But that strategy that costs only 6.5% is open for, uh, for a transaction, I would say over $700,000. I love it. It sounds like a great fit, especially for Canadians that 
that end up losing most of the time the 1031 exchange benefit when they if and when they take the money back to Canada. So that's a great option for yeah. Canadians that are that are yeah. trying to defer or avoid or change around their tax strategy. Nadine, yeah. how do people reach you? Because certainly I think many of my listeners will want to. Uh, NadineLajoie.com. And uh, if you cannot find me, just just Google Nadine Racing. You'll find me all over the ah. place. I, with my motorcycle racing and boat racing. And, and now I wrote a couple of articles about the international fighting requirement to be sure that people have their 5472, 5471, 8938, F-bar, like all those- Lots of numbers there. A lot, a lot of those because if not, it's $10,000 per penalty per year. Yeah. yeah. So because my nine accountants did nine mistakes in my, in my case, that's why I'm so animated in helping people in my business consulting to kind of save those taxes and be sure that you are not getting caught with the international fighting requirements. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely worth the investment in speaking with Nadine and finding out if you qualify for a tax savings or a tax reduction or whatever the case may be. Everybody needs to look at why do you need to pay the money to the IRS or the CRA or whatever your tax regulator is. So thank you, Nadine, for your time today. I'm Lauren Cohen signing off from Investing Across Borders. As you can see, we are teaching you strategies so that you can invest, live, work, and play across borders and also save money on your taxes, which is an amazing strategy. Nadine, thank you. I wish you a bon weekend and we will talk again very, very soon. Okay, a bientôt. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.